Let's do a quick tutorial on the RG552 firmware updates for Android and Linux. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to another episode of Modern Broadcast. Two in one day? That seems crazy. Today's episode will be very impromptu, just going over how to update the firmware for the RG552. If you missed my video from earlier today, I strongly suggest you give it a watch before this one. Let's get started. Down in the description, I'll include a link to this handwritten guide of how to update the Android and Linux OS firmware. Uh, it's a great guide, basically what we're going to be following today uh, in order to get the Android firmware updated and also the Linux firmware. First things first is you're going to want to follow the links down below to download both the Android uh, update, which is this one here. Go and download that. Great, now that that's downloaded, uh, follow the second link in the description down below. This is for the Linux operating system. Go ahead and go here and click on download. And it's 1.5 gigs, which is too big to scan, so go ahead and download anyways. All right, now that they're on our desktop, let's go ahead and extract these. Uh, one is in a RAR format and the other is in 7-zip, so let's go ahead and just extract this. Perfect. So here it is, and the file that we're looking for is inside the folder, and it is the update en image folder. There's also an SD disk tool, um, which we will need in order to do the Android. But let's go ahead and extract the um, Linux version now. All right, perfect. So and inside here, the folder or the image file that we're looking for is right here. So let's go ahead and uh, get our micro SD cards prepped. All right, let's go ahead and start with the Linux side of things. I'm using uh, Etcher and let's go ahead and drag this file over. Okay, let's select our device, which is our micro SD card. Okay and flash. So this process takes about six minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward um, as it, it takes a long time. All right, with Linux all done, let's go ahead and do Android. Let's open up our folder and in here, we're gonna have to extract this SD toolkit and uh, we'll just put it in another folder. Open up inside there and there's a software. So this is the software we're gonna use. Go ahead and select our micro SD card that we're using for Android. Upgrade firmware, choose the firmware. And this is the update tool image and hit create. So it's gonna do um, quite a bit down here, making through a bunch of stuff. Uh, it's also gonna pop up that we need to format our disk um, for me, it did it twice. That's not needed. Also, when selecting uh, the micro SD card with the Android firmware and this software here, you can only utilize um, up to 32 gigabytes. If you go beyond that, it will not work and it will fail. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward because it said the start copy firmware to user for a very long time that so much so that I thought it was broken. Um, but in fact, it, it was still doing what it was supposed to be. All right, now that that's done, let's go ahead and um, say okay here and close this out. And then head on over to our device. So here we have the RG552 again. Let's go ahead and grab our micro SD card. Again, um, we'll start with Android 
and that was on the 16 gigabyte card. So here's that right here. And let's grab the device and we're going to put it in the TF1 slot. Let's go ahead and boot up the device. And here you see the Ambernic logo and it will start with a um, ring circle here and it says installing system update. This took a very long time, um, like over 10 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward and cut a lot of that out. So after the lengthy install process, it'll say erasing, uh, and then it says um, wiping data, formatting data, formatting catch, data wipe complete, doing action succeeded, please remove the SD card. So basically in doing so, updating the firmware of the Android device, it will wipe your system. Just something to keep in mind before you decide to update the Android device. Uh, it will not wipe out the uh, ROMs SD card, only the TF1 and system. So let's reboot the device. And here we have the default UI, uh, as if the device was brand new. So if we scroll down, if we see we got like the Dolphin emulator, those premium emulators, um, but also there's the Play Store. I don't think anything else has really changed. Um, I think it's just the addition of the Play Store. Because all this looks about what was there before. So let's go ahead and open this up. And there we go. It wants us to sign in. Moving over to Linux now. Let's go ahead and grab that SD card and put it in the TF1 slot. And go ahead and boot up the device. The nice thing is that the Linux side does not have to do an install process. It's just on the SD card. So it's ready to go um, and ready to play. Go ahead and hook up our mini HDMI cable and see if we have that audio lag. So right away, uh, this is even worse than the first time. Let's just listen to this. That's too bad. That is too bad. So one thing to note, in handheld mode, it's spot on. It's quite interesting to see how it works in handheld mode, but not with the HDMI out adapter. Maybe that'll get patched in another future firmware update. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. Look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.